which I believe are in the process of Miss Pearl is about to lay eggs any any day now. And Miss Pearl, interesting enough, listen to this. Miss Pearl is a peel isolatus. She peeled orange. Her mother, Miss Lucy, have eggs in this flower pot right now. And her mother is a purebred isolatus. Who would have thought? And guess what? This is her dad, Big Casanova. Now I have Miss Pearl's sister in this aquarium right here. We call them super shorties. This female right here is Miss Pearl's sister, right before you. She didn't peel. In fact, the only one that peeled and morphed into a different coloration, this orange color, is Miss Pearl. So you may be asking yourself, Skip, how is that possible? We're going to get into that. Over here in this aquarium, we have some of Miss Pearl and Slugger's offspring. This pure, pearly white female Midas here is all from Miss Pearl. That nice tangerine orange Midas and a few others. Now this tank right here consists of Bob Midas and orange Midas. Of both of my pairs, Miss Pearl and Slugger. Crazy Dove eyes in the top of the tank. Also, Casanova and Miss Lucy. Now some of these Midas in this tank I had uh, got from my buddy Marco. It's a few of them in here. It's probably about four of them in here that are not off my bloodline. But the majority of the Midas in this tank was born here in this kennel. And as you can see, they all have a different look. None of them really particularly look like their parents. They're not the same color as their parents. They do have the same body shape and structure as their parents, which is to be expected. But as far as visual, the visual aspect of looking at these Midas, they really don't look like their, their parents as far as the color is concerned, or what the naked eye can see. But they are. And again, you may be wondering, how is that possible? We're gonna get into that in this video series. This is gonna be a series of videos because I can't condense all the information that I need to share with you guys so you can have a greater understanding of how to tell the difference between the different variations of Midas, their origins, and things of that nature. I can't condense it all in one video, unfortunately. That takes a lot of time. So we're gonna to have to have a series of videos. This is the first of series of videos. Over here we have a young Midas. And this Midas right here, believe it or not, and you can see the resemblance to his dad, is off of King Bobo. Looks good. Thick balls, grayish face, but he have more burgundy red in his, his coloration and a white tint between his balls. He got very thick balls. Whereas his dad, King Bobo, on the other hand, look more like this species of, of Midas. This is a chancho, ladies and gentlemen. He's a faded chancho, meaning that his balls are faded. They fade in and out periodically. But if you really want to know how to tell the difference between a chancho and any other Midas, visually, just look to the color and the body structure. Chanchos are a greenish color. Their body have a greenish tint to it with a little grayish hint. And most importantly, their underbelly in their face and in their cheek areas is yellow. Chanchos are green and yellow. They're from Lake Apoyo. Laguna de Lake Apoyo in Central America. Now Lake Apoyo is one of, no, it's actually the largest crater lake in Central America. The largest crater lake out of 14 crater lakes. And I believe Lake Apoyo is 23,000 years old. So it's a fairly young lake. 
let's take a look at this guy's dad. Here we are. Big King Bobo. This is the father of the Midas I just showed. Now King Bobo on the other hand remind me a lot of a chancho. Because he have a lot of that yellow in the underbelly, under the under the gill plate, and the chin line, and his eyes. And the way his head slopes down. Very similar to a chancho. And even if this fish does have chancho in him, it's not a purebred chancho, so to speak. So I would I would refer to this fish as a barred Midas. Because I do know the family lineage and tree, but I can't go past his dad here, Big Casanova, and Miss Lucy, and their their parents, which my good buddy and good friend Wendell bred to create this species right here. Now I do know the father was an armorello and the mother was an isoletus. That's why if you look at this fish and you look at most of his offspring, they look like red hair isoletus and they also favor armorellos as well. So you guys can take a good look at them. So we're going to discuss all these topics. And of course you know. I'm going to bring you guys documentation. Because what I always say. Documentation. Beats conversation all day long. So. I collected. A lot of reference material. Throughout the years. And I'm going to share that with you guys. And I'm going to break down the differences between certain Midas species and the Midas complex, I'm going to prove to you guys, without a shadow of a doubt, that all these species of Midas, the Hogaboomera, the uh, Amarello, the Zaliosis, the Sagi, the Earl, which, which we call Earls, the Chancho, all of these fish came from one fish, derived from one species of sickness. The Midas. All of them are Midas. They just different variations of this species. They're, they're what we call subspecies of Midas. And I'm going to prove it to you. But first we got to have an understanding of the definition of the word Midas. Where it comes from, where it derived from. We got to understand family, genos, or genus, and species. We gotta learn the difference between the two. We gotta learn the order that it comes in. So we gotta talk about a lot of things, folks. But we gonna get into it, and Skip gonna break it down too, and hopefully I help a lot of you guys out. Because I noticed on YouTube and on Facebook, and just on the internet in general, that a lot of guys are mislabeling their different mitre subspecies. And I say subspecies so there won't be any confusion. These are not separate species. These are subspecies of one particular species, and that's the Midas. The Ampelopus centronellum Midas. Now, centronellum and Midas are one and the same, people. One describes the other. In fact, before we go to the next video segment, and we end this one, I'm going to leave on this note. Midas, the word Midas, is a fable. If I'm not mistaken, if my memory is correct. I, I read about the meaning of the word Midas when I was a teenager. So it's hard for me to remember everything. I forgot more than most people know these days. But the word Midas is a fable. If I'm not mistaken, a Greek fable. There was once a fable king named King Midas and everything that he touched he wanted to turn into gold and that's what we got like when you look at the commercials back in the, um, the late 80s and 90s got the Midas touch that's what they were talking about that's what they were referring to King Midas the fable Greek mythology he wanted everything to turn into gold so the people who was responsible for collecting this species of cichlid back in the day decided because they collected some gold colored 
Midas, they decided to call him Midas. The Sentinel of Midas. They nicknamed him Midas. And that's where the word Midas come from. That's where the name Midas come from. Just so you guys know a little bit of history. Because there's nothing new in this hobby but the history you do not know. So until next time, in my next segment, part two, we're going to discuss and go a little further.